Hello, everyone, and welcome. My name is Wesley Chen, and I'll be the moderator of this month's webinar. This month's topic will focus on 4G LTE Advanced and CBRS. I would like to bring Patrick Moreno onto the stage, our product marketing manager. But just before that, I would like to qu qu quickly point out the Q&A chat field. Uh, you'll see three options on the bottom. It's raise hand, chat, or Q&A. If you have any questions throughout the webinar, please feel free to use the Q&A chat field. Patrick and I will be moderating these questions and answering them at the end of the webinar. Also, this webinar will be recorded for your future needs. I will now hand it over to Patrick. Thank you, Wesley. And thank everybody for their time and interest with Zizel and our subject for this month. Okay. So how to leverage the fixed wireless broadband. Your moderator today is Wesley Chen. He's the marketing specialist for North America Zizel. Most of you may have known me. I'm Patrick Moreno, I'm the product marketing manager for key account sales in North America. So we can see from this graph here and kind of looking at where we're lacking broadband. As you can see in the rural environment, it's pretty predominant there, 39%. Compared to an urban where, you know, we have access of all different types and flavors available to us. So that's kind of where we kind of see this market going towards, you know, getting those underserved rural markets up and running with adequate broadband. So why fix wireless access? Well, the network is growing, you know, over several years now, we've had uh, the emergence of new technologies, especially over the air fixed wireless access that's really predominant now. And the bandwidths are much better than before, which we can do more than just voice. Now we have a lot of internet access and then specialty applications that allow us to be unbound and actually get out to those underserved areas and provide access. So where do we see, where do we uh, look for this fixed wireless access? Who really needs this? Well, it's really in our heartland of America. There's a lot of you know, underserved people out there that can have the ability now to take advantage and get that adequate high-speed internet access to these uh, applications out here. You know, utilizing this new uh, th this technology that's emerging from Zizel that allows you to place this and over the air get wireless access and provide internet connectivity. The biggest question is the business case. How do we determine that all the providers go through this every year struggling to see where they have their projects, spend that money that they receive from the federal government and provide services for their, their customers and new subscribers? How do they determine? You know, it's, it's always gonna be a, a, a guessing game where that you know, where do they draw the line? Where do they have their deployments? So the business case is, you know, most people are not going to deploy new copper. You know, they're going to maintain what they have, you know, and they're not going to be looking to deploy more copper. And with fiber, definitely it's the way to go. If you're going to have a project, you're going to, uh, trench or deploy overhead on the aerial and, and poles, you're gonna probably go with fiber. But again, there's a cost associated. When you wanna deliver services into an urban type of setting, it obviously makes sense because there's a return on investment. However, in a rural environment for those underserved, there could be uh, neighbors in proximity from either one the three miles or, or more apart. And to trench fiber out there, does it really make sense to do that? And where's that return on investment? But how much does it cost on average? You know, we just kind of have an estimation here on average of fiber deployment S install from one to $6 per foot, depending on the fiber count. And it's very difficult to estimate. And that's why these companies, you know, the providers get together 
and they deliberate and where are they going to deploy and where are they going to spend money. Even big uh, customers that are into the market talking about deploying into cities have a rough time and sometimes they just abandon that project altogether. So that's what brings us into fixed wireless and the key uh, wireless solutions, the key benefits that are available for us to be able to provide this type of uh, application. Some of those key benefits are faster internet access, obviously for those underserved applications. Instead of having, you know, barely a megabit to get connected, now you can have megabits, you know, which in some cases we see an average of 25 megabits up, five megabits down. Utilizing technologies that we have over the air from the 3GPP, 4G LTE, advanced and the emerging CBRS. The ability to deploy outside, so it makes it much easier for an operator or service provider to access that equipment without having to play the phone tag and schedule with that subscriber, you know, when they can get entry into the home and do some of the work that they need to provide. As well as interop with the, the hardware, the base stations and the management software, be able to, to not just deploy the product, but actually maintain and manage what's going on and not have to actually go on site every time when there's an issue for preventive maintenance that's required. As well as funding from the FCC and the federal government, they're mandating now speed testing and the ability to provide that speed test and report on it is applicable now for those who receive those funding. They have to report back. And having a device, a solution that can provide that is very paramount at this point. And then having a company you can trust. So Zizel is an industry leader over 29 years in telecommunications experience, which does include fixed wireless access and 4G LTE solutions. So the, the, the typical application and it's very simple. It's one point to another from that base station using the spectrum and the last few miles to that subscriber wherever they're at and deploying this outdoor 4G LTE CPE. Then integrating that and connecting it into the home which they would be able to utilize a home gateway and provide the, the normal home wireless networking that most of us enjoy in an urban environment, but now in an underserved rural environment, that's also available at this point. Typical applications in the rural environment, again, from that base station, and we're looking at maybe five to six miles, and in some cases we can go even more, like 12, and maybe up to 18 miles or so, and provide that connection and allow those rural underserved people to have a better internet experience over the air. So in a rural environment like this farm here, as well as camping environment, even though you want to get away and go to nature and go up to the mountains, enjoy this time, especially now that the summer season is full swing, you still want to be connected. You want to talk about what you're doing. You want to show people pictures of the campfire, the marshmallows you're roasting, and you want to tweet that. You want to Facebook it. You want to YouTube it. And you should be able to do that. And now these campgrounds can do that utilizing fixed wireless access, a 4G LTE CPE, and connect to the outside world and allow those campers where they're at to be able to have access to the internet. Lakes and marinas have always been typical niche projects for wireless, like Wi-Fi. However, now we can utilize the ability of a 4G LTE fixed wireless access at the main boathouse. And then those users, maybe they're on the boat, they're at the dock, they can have the ability to have high-speed internet via LTE, 4G fixed wireless, communicate to the base station, to the big cities in the back hall, and still be able to do this. So these applications are coming up all the time and you have another alternative option with fixed wireless access 
and Forge ELT. Also with the sport parks, we're talking about not the big Coliseum stadiums, but we're talking about the, the weekend warriors. Your kids are playing sports like soccer. All those sport parks can be wired up with fixed wireless access and LTE 4G. Be able to connect, they can show those photos, they can take the videos and upload those over the air via 4G LTE and be able to connect. So you have those subscribers, potential customers that are totally off the grid. You know, how do you provide access? There's no internet, right? There's not going to be any real power to get them to it, but how you can still utilize the same setup from the base station using the LTE spectrum and the 4G LTE CPE, be able to connect into your infrastructure you can provide for these off the grid uh, potential customers. So in a remote cabinet somewhere, they can put a gateway, basic home router, and then maybe a battery backup system or provide it over solar power. This way you can totally be independent of power source. You have a gateway to provide internet. This is also a great application for the state parks, you know, the forestry service. They want to have some telemetry they want to capture in the forest, maybe some sensors or some type. They can all connect that via Wi-Fi in the gateway, and all this can be self-contained with the power source of a battery backup and the solar power array to power up that LTE CPE and connect to the rest of the world, utilizing the power of the sun. Then, 4G LTE with fixed wireless access and disaster recovery. These things happen in our lives, right? We have no control. Disasters will take place, but we still need to provide communication. Utilizing that same type of setup, connecting to the outside world with the base station and the LTE CPE, you can have the first responders be able to connect in this environment as well, connecting to a, a gateway that provides wireless so they can all sync up with their various applications and utilize the Wi-Fi to help coordinate those disaster recovery relief. You can re, uh, reach out to those city-owned municipality uh, first responders and see what type of applications that are possible with an, a 4G LTE CPE and the ability to utilize this in their uh, recovery uh, system. So, Multiple features are built into that CPE. So you can utilize two different wireless technologies, the 4G LTE Advanced, and then the CBRS. It has a built-in directional antenna, be able to point and shoot that signal spectrum to the base station to ensure good quality connection. Weatherproofing, so once you set this up, you don't have to worry about taking the whole system down in the events of uh, extreme weather. It can, once it's deployed outside, whether it's on the rooftop of a home or business, it'll be set up and fixed so you don't have to worry about uh, any issues with the weather environment. Works in a bridge mode and a routed mode. So you can use it in different applications, different types of hardware can be added to this within the, the premise and provide the service. Also works with power over ethernet, providing the data and the power over the same ethernet cable. It makes it really convenient, easier for a deployment when you put this uh, device outdoors. And Wi-Fi is built into it. Now the Wi-Fi we'll talk about is for device management. So it connects to the 4G LTE Advanced or CBRS. The, the networks, there's two distinct categories, category six for LTE Advanced and category 16 for CBRS. They look similar on the, on the 10,000 foot view, but when we go deeper into it, you can see there are some differences within the networks. Built-in directional antenna. So that way it's not like, Wi-Fi as we know it with omnidirection and it just suits 
signals everywhere. It's a panel design, as you can see, it's square. So when you mount it, you're pointing it actually at the, the base station. And that way you can get better signal and ensure the quality of that spectrum connecting to the LTE CPP, CPE and then to the gateway itself. We talked about the weather, IP66 rated, so it protects you know, from the outdoor environments. So again, once you mount this and wire it up, then you don't have to worry about taking it down, uh, storing it away for the winter. You can just continue to leave it up. So whether it's really warm outside, rain, snow, lightning, it will be protected. Connect with just about any home router. So as you can see that simple setup design, that ethernet cable that goes into the gateway, but really you can use just about any gateway that the subscriber may already own. Uh, we obviously re recommend using one of our latest Zizel Ethernet CPEs, which is our EMG 6726. It would work exceptional with this LTE CPE and provide not only the home networking, but also the uh, ability of high power Wi-Fi and the high performance of all gigabit design. Works in a bridge or a routed mode. Again, in bridge mode, you're gonna connect it just, again, to any home gateway. Obviously, we recommend the Zizel, and you can provide the connectivity within the home. All your the difference is you're not using a hardwired connection from the provider, you're using over the air that feeds into the CPE and then ethernet into the gateway. Then with the routed option, you can still use it and provide router functionality. But in this case, we're connecting it to an existing network that has a W, uh, an AP extender that's built with a wireless controller in it. And then from there, you can connect all your devices and even provide the whole home Wi-Fi we call MultiPro just in an extender. And up to three extenders can be added to provide that connectivity within a premise. So we talked about power over Ethernet, the POE, the data and the power. So very simple design from the LTE CPE, you'll have your data and power. That'll feed into a POE injector, which is included with the LTE CPE. And then from there, that will split out that power to the outlet and then the data only goes to the home gateway. And then from there, it's protected. It uses uh, 802.3 AF, the PoE Plus, for high power on the PoE side, and it's lightning protected with the K21 enhancement. The web interface for the management, the, in, once it's installed, you really probably don't want to have to climb up on a ladder or a bucket and have to service this device. So to do that, we employed Wi-Fi in it. And you say, okay, well, why is it only a wireless N and not a dual band? Because the purpose of the device is to provide LTE. The Wi-Fi is really just for managing the device. So it's, it's off by default, supports N, and it's 300 megabits. So it's very adequate for managing with a you know, a smartphone device or even a computer. The SSID is hidden, so the subscriber won't see it. They won't connect to it. They won't be able to access it unless they knew about it. And you can provide some extra features, security like Mac filtering. It has a couple antennas built in for it. Then with the interface, you can log into your mobile device, like you said, a smartphone and access the setup configuration pages. And it's all done in a mobile format. So it's really easy to do. You can do that, park right up in the subscriber's driveway and then use your computer or smartphone device and access it. We also will have a mobile app device that'll be available as well. So it's a little bit different in its format other than the configuration pages that we see in the user interface. So here you can do some testing. Uh, you can check the, net, the, the status of the cellular network. You can see your internet connection. It uh, gives you an option for the interface to see what's going on with the device.
Also, an application that we can utilize this 4G LTE in the failover situation. So in an office environment, usually they may have a gateway that has a couple internet connections. And in this format, if the internet somehow goes down for the office, then everybody's out of work and they'll have to go home. Not in this case, though, with the 4G LTE CPE, connecting into a gateway that has multiple WANs. So one WAN will have your primary connection. And then a backup will be the 4G LTE CPE. So in the event that one of the WANs goes down, which is the primary, then it'll fail over automatically into the LTE CPE and provide connectivity with really comparable performance. So gateways like our uh, USG series offer multiple WANs that can be configured to do a load balance and a failover option. Only with those gateways have that ability to, to do that. So if you're interested in that, you know, that is probably the way to go for a small office environment. Most home gateways will only have a single WAN. So this is not really applicable option for a residential application. So managing and maintaining your subscribers, we utilize tried and true technology, uh, broadband for respect TR69 and the ability to peer in over the network to the subscribers environment, just like we did with ethernet gateways and DSL CPEs, we can do the same thing, same type of preventive and troubleshooting remotely with broadband form spec TR69. Also in the bridge mode, we do support what we call the IP pass through. So, from the central office and the auto configuration server that's there, over the network through the base stations, we can connect to the CPE. Then managing past the, the LTE CPE into the subscriber's home, into the actual ethernet gateway and passing that through, even in the bridge mode, you can still pass the TR69 and other TRs into the device and allow Visibility in the home, see the connected devices, prescribe preventive troubleshooting measures, and even help the subscriber without having to send a truck out to help that subscriber with their issues. We talked about CAF2 performance testing. That's also available as well. So utilizing the TR143 and your auto configuration server, your ACS, gives you the ability to manage that device and perform those speed tests. So you can report those to the, the, the right government agencies, you know, which we had some prior webinars last month about talking about the CAF2. Also in the gateway itself, there is a diagnostics page and we do have an option for UCLA speed testing that you can actually run a test from there. I know it's a small image, can't really see too much, but you have that ability built into it as well in the CPE. So let's take a look closer at our products in the multi-band fixed wireless access. This is our 4G LTE Advanced LTE 7461. So there's the front and bottom panel typical installation setup, the, the application that we utilize that we just talked about. And it's based on category six LTE, the three GPP. Also roughly about the 400 megabits or so, four spatial streams built into it, does support the failover, does have PoE with 802.3AF, multi uh, MIMO antennas, I'm sorry, two by two high gain, with up to eight decibels. Again, the bridge and routing mode supports remote management with broadband forum spec. We have the uh, user interface mode for smart device as well as the mobile app. So the supported bands two, four, five, seven, 12, 13, 25, 26, 29, and 66 are available in CAT3. Again, roughly about 400 down, 50 up, category six. 
two radios, two antennas besides the wireless chipset, multiple in, multiple out. So multiple sending and receiving antennas that help aggregate and provide uh, that, that spatial streams and coverage. Go up to eight decibels. The CBRS and that fixed wireless access. So what is CBRS? We hear a lot of talk about this. It's an emerging technology that's coming out right now. Citizen broadband radio system uses TD LTE to provide voice and data over a, a, a 3.5 gigahertz spectrum. As you can see, different types of applications are already utilizing this and it can be used to be able to provide and share bandwidth. So it makes it a little bit easier. It's also unlicensed spectrum that can be used. So why does it matter? Well, the 3.5 gigahertz, kind of unused, reserved by the US Navy military. And now it's open for use with the public. But the, the biggest advantage is here, not just for operators or mobile operators or service providers who want to get into this market or have this, they can join in and even set up your own network, private you know, property owners and can utilize this technology and set this up themselves. And it's really the fast track from LTE to jump into 5G that's, you know, we hear a lot of talk about. So not just the mobile operators, but property owners can actually set up their own CBRS networks and provide connectivity, internet access over the air. It's based on a shared spectrum. So as I stated, it was originally for the Navy radar, but it's been opened up so we can use it. And there's a different tier. So there'll be some that have satellite services that are already available. So the way this works is there's a system that monitors all this and it'll keep track of all these three tiers. And if one of the incumbents is needs access, then they'll get access first and the rest will be placed on hold. You can go into tier two and you can purchase some spectrum and then assign yourself a, spec, uh, a piece of spectrum that you can use all the time. So you'll get priority over the general tier, which is they have access, they don't have a specific license to a, a spectrum, but they use it. And in the event that one of the incumbents or priority two needs it, they'll they'll get that. And then you kind of placed in the holding pattern until it's released and then you can use it again. So who's authorized to use it? Well, we already have a solution as we just showed you based on uh, CBRS and that's our CPE, uh, LT, 4G CPE gateway, that's the 7480, which we'll talk about. So it's already an authorized product. You can go on CBR Alliance and you can take a look at the FCC authorized and user devices in this uh, band that we're using for CBRS. So the LTE 7480 looks very identical to the LTE 7461, except the technology is different. It uses category 16, speeds are a little bit faster, eight spatial streams. It has four radios, four antennas for the MIMO, high gain antennas that are built into it. Also does support the PoE with the 802.3 AF, IP67 rated now, and also, works in the bridge and router mode, remote management with TR69 broadband form of spec, TR143, so you can have that ability to support that. Along with the uh, user interface option and the mobile app. 3GPP, LTE Advanced Pro, and CBRS. So you can see the performance there. 573 around download and about 15 up. So pretty, pretty good. Four radius, four antennas, as you see, multiple in, multiple out. So very good aggregation there with the radios and then receivers and senders. And decibels per radio element. So there are some current trials that are going on right now that we see. 
So, so for LTE advanced, the 4G LTE, uh, pretty good downloads that we see for those in early deployments. CBRS, we also have some as well. A few trials going on that we're performing in Oregon. It's about uh, 20 different sites, 20 mile radius or so, you know, as you can see from these two options here that we were uh, doing some testing. It's going very well. Good comparable speeds out of the LTE 7480. So take a look at installation. Very simple, there's the connection at the bottom. You'll have your gigabit LAN ports with the PoE. It has a protective grommet as well as the options for the Wi-Fi on and off button. There's also a reset button. Then there's an LED indicator and then the SIM card slot. So you can put the SIM card in. Over those ports, there's a plastic cover that screws down and protects those ports from the outside weather. Then included is the PoE injector that connects into your gateway. Installing the SIM card, again, you get, remove that plastic cover and then install your SIM card. For Ethernet cabling, you're going to plug in the Ethernet cable and then use the grommet and tighten it down with the protection so it's sealed from the elements. Mounting, you can pole mount this, which is probably a pretty popular option when you use a J pole and you connect it to the roof of the house. There's also wall mounting option as well. And it has a swivel type option. So you can point it in different directions, different degrees, depending on where that LTE base station's at. So you want to be able to connect to it and have, you know, a pretty proper line of sight or at least near line of sight. And then grounding, you want to ground this. It has a grounding option. So that way in those areas where there's thunderstorms, you want to protect your investment with your subscriber, you want to be able to ground that device. So in the bridge mode, you'll connect it with the PoE injector. Very simple to do. Couple LED indicators, the red blinking, it's booting up. Steady red, there's an error, so you gotta check and see what's going on within the device. Green, blinking, it's connecting to the internet, and when it's solid, steady, then it's connected. To the internet, you have a signal. So, accessing the device uh, when it's amber, it's blinking for the Wi Fi button, it means it's you're going to turn it on and then you can remove the cover and then place it back on. And then you can use your mobile app or computer device and get the, the management interface of the SSID and the wireless key that's randomized to be able to connect it into it. Then we'll take a look at the user interface. So here we've made some changes and it's good to be aware of what's going on. I know most of you are, who are familiar with Zizel products know the kind of standard graphic user interface that we have. So now we've taken a little different steps here and made some changes. So accessing it just like you would any other Zizel device, you log into it, username, password, it's gonna be randomly generated on the back of the device, type it in. Then that's our user interface for our LTE devices. As you can see, it looks quite different from what we've seen in the past. And you're gonna say, wow, so look, explain this to me. So we will. So you can see, uh, you can actually change these tiles and you can put them in different order. So if you didn't like the default and just say you wanted to put the cellular information up top and then maybe Wi-Fi settings second and system towards the bottom. You can do that. You can shuffle this around in different orders. And you can change the, the color by using the theme option and change different colors. So maybe you don't want to look at blue, maybe you like green or red or orange. You know, it, you can change that. Then when you look at the uh, the the status tiles, we can take a look at those. The connectivity, 
as you can see, it has the options, shows you your connection, and then you can go into the, the wired or the wireless interface. System info gives you all the, the basics that you would see on the status page, the device name, the firmware version, uptime, MAC address, and cellular connection. And then you drill down into it and you can get more information about that. Then the cellular tab uh, tile, then you can look at the IP address, the uptime, and your signal strength, and drill down deeper into that as well. On the Wi-Fi settings for the management, you can go in, once that's enabled, you can go through, you can see the password, you can change it, you can change SSID if you wanted to have it more customized for you guys, you can do that and drill down into the settings and change the password. The LAN settings, just like you would any Ethernet type of gateway or DSL, has a similar LAN settings that you can select DHCP options, you can be configured from there. Then the main menu at the far right hand side, you'll see that menu, just click on that and it gives you the home menu and the options that are available in there. As well as the quick access uh, menus from the side you see. There's the wizard, the top one, and that guides you through quick kind of setup, set up the time and then the device and the Wi-Fi. The theme go through and then you can select the different colors to output on your graphic user interface for the LT device. There's a reboot option that allows you to power cycle the device. The language, it's a US based North American product so it's all, all English. There's no other languages in our firmware editor you can actually select. And then a logout option. So when you're done making changes, you, or maintenance, just hit the log out button and then you'll exit out. So in the menus for the home, you can see the network settings and then there's a broadband setting set up, home networking, routing, NAT, and D, uh, DNS. Under security, we have firewall settings. We have some Mac filtering and certificate option. Under system monitor, you have the log, the traffic status, ARP table, routing table, and cellular WAN status. Then under maintenance, we have system user accounts that you can create to log into the device. The remote management, that's where you access the, the device remotely, time, email, syslogging option, there's the firmware updates, backup and restore features, reboot and diagnostics. Very similar features that you've seen in our Ethernet gateways and DSL CPUs. Then in the mobile version, it conforms to that format so you can use your smart tablet or phone and get the same screens, you know, condensed into that smaller, you know, screen format. And you have the same options that you can go scroll through. Makes it very convenient. That way you don't have to climb up to the device and connect it to the computer. You can access it wirelessly under the hidden management interface and make those changes for your subscriber. So with more information, we have some questions and answers that we're gonna go to right now. And we'll take a look at some of these. I have a question over here. It says, how far does the LTE signal travel? Do I need any kind of booster or a fam to cell cell device to increase the signal? Right, that's a good question. So the Zizel products, uh, average distance from the base station, probably about five to six miles, uh, or you can probably go maybe 12, and depending on you know the equipment, maybe even further. But you don't require any type of boosting or femto cell type of device in, in our physical configuration. Just from the base station to our LTE CPE is a sufficient enough. Another question is, we have CAF2. Can I use the LTE CPE for speed, speed test reporting? That's a great question, yes. So both the LTE 7461 and LTE 7480 support broadband forward spec TR69 with the TR143 for the, the, re, the reporting. Obviously, you're gonna need the use of an auto configuration server software to be able to perform that. 
to be able to submit your results as well as, you know, you have the alternative options of a black or a white box that we can be employed if you not, don't have an auto configuration server in that setup. What does 4G mean anyway? It's a great question. A lot of people get confused, especially now with 5G. They, they see the term and they equate it with Wi-Fi and it's totally separate. It's just a marketing term that describes that generation of, of wireless product or service. That's all it really means. So 4G is the fourth generation of wireless technology, whether it's LTE or whatever it is. And the, the coming 5G is just the fifth generation of wireless service over the air. That's all it means. And, you know, typically it could be anywhere from four, maybe even 10 times the speed of a, a, what we call the third generation or 3G networks. What are the advantages of 4G LTE for users? So 4G LTE gives underserved users a better online experience, right? Instead of getting a few megabits, now they can probably get 20 or, or more megabits down from the over air 4G LTE connection. Yeah, improve stability, throughput, latency of the fixed wireless access in the, in the 4G network. It brings better speeds for them just about anywhere, you know, not have to be tied down to a physical hard line connection. What are the advantages with LTE for service providers? That's a great question too. So they have the ability to offer new uh, tiers and new services with their uh, existing network. Providers can, you know, they can create uh, opportunities for business applications. Uh, they can also help reduce some of the costs that's involved, you know, with maybe a big fiber rollouts. And, and, you know, maybe interconnect with other providers to provide that backbone network. And, you know, they can still utilize older technologies, you know, like 2G or 3G that's out there. What is MIMO and why is it important to LTE? That's a great question too. So MIMO, multiple in, multiple out, is the ability to increase data rates, performance over the air using multiple antennas, and spatial streaming and multiplexing that aggregate all these sending and receiving paths together to provide better connectivity and the ability to provide more data over aggregation. So it's really, we've been using this technology for quite some time, especially with the wireless and, you know, several years ago built for antenna technology, but actually applied to a lot more technologies to be able to aggregate data through. Why doesn't the LTE CPE have 11 AC Wi-Fi built in? Yeah, that's a great question. The struggle, do, you, do we want to be able to provide that? Or most customers, they may already have their own gateway that has 11 AC. So to add it in there, maybe we don't need it. You know, all we really want to do is the subscriber and the provider want to provide LTE, the internet over the air. At that point, you can interconnect this with any gateway and even a high performance gateway like our EMG 6726. That'll help propagate the Wi-Fi within the home with the home networking mesh of multi-pro and then the ability to have improved coverage and performance throughout the home. What is the length of the ethernet cable from the LTE CPE to an indoor router? So usually, um, about 328 feet using a cat 5e or better a cat six. Uh, that's the, probably about the maximum distance you want to go. Now, depending on the installation, your mounting on the roof or side of the residence or a building, you know, how far do you go to where the actual indoor DMARC is going to go that can have some factors on the installation, but typically ethernet run is 328 feet. What exactly is CBRS? Right, CBRS, Citizen Band Radio Service, uh, established by the FCC. It was originally used for military purposes and radar, but freed up as a lot of these frequencies are being freed up for public use because of the demand 
the performance requirements and needs that you know makes sense to allow us to use different frequencies. So CBRS is really starting to take off. Big providers right now, just recently in the news, are deploying CBRS as uh, another option in their their portfolio. What makes CBRS application significant? Well, it allows even you know property owners of uh, buildings to be able to deploy their own private LTE network without an unlicensed bands that they can use in that shared paradigm, you know, with uh, the uh, CBRS system. So they don't have to spend, they can also purchase the Spectrum too. If they want to have a more consistent connection, they can do that as well. But it gives the ability for just about anybody to be able to provide the fixed wireless access for GLTE and then using this emerging CBRS technology. How will CBRS be structured? Well, it's part of using that system that we looked at, the SAS, or we call Spectrum Access System. That's the, the main thing that manages all those uh, wireless uh, 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 entities together. So you have the incumbents, the priority, and then the general access. So it's a whole mix of different types of people or services or devices being trying to get access. And the way to manage is that we use this SAS system and it keeps track of everybody who's connecting. And if they are an incumbent, they have priority first. And then the priority will be second and then the general access will be third. And in the event that a incumbent needs access, they'll get access first. And then it'll fall back to whoever's on priority. If that frequency is not used, they can use that one that they have license to that they purchase, or they can just wait until it's their turn to use it and then the general access can be utilized. So there's three different tiers. We talked about the incumbents, the priority, and then the general access. For 3GP and 4G LTE, go to their website and get a lot of information about L LTE, 4G. Do we have some questions? I think we have some questions. Whoops. Some we'll questions. Yeah, All right. That's fine. Uh, we have a question from Dennis. Do you provide a SAS client with the CP so I can talk to the SAS for CBRS? Or do you expect the ENB vendor to provide the SAS interoperability via a domain proxy? That's an excellent question. So right now, we just have the CPE. So to either, you know, you want to purchase Spectrum, then you'll need to do something like that. There are other companies that are out there that do provide that and allow you to work with the SAS. And it also can be done by the vendor of the, the, the tower, the, the space station as well. So the interoperability shouldn't be a big issue because we conform to the specification of CBRS. And you know, again, depending on what client you use, what uh, vendor of SAS is out there, uh, that can be uh, obtained. Definitely, great question. So someone asked anonymously, I think. So another question is, will there be field trials in high lightning areas? Well, I'm assuming there should be because the whole Midwest section or central is a lightning storm area. I mean, up and down the, from Minnesota's, Dakota's, down to Oklahoma's and Texas, there's gonna be lightning everywhere around there. So definitely, and that's why you would wanna employ the grounding feature, make sure that's secured. That way you protect that investment. Any more questions, what do you think? I think we're good for okay. now. Okay. If there is any more questions, please feel free to reach out to us. We'll give you some contact information. All right. So again, 
three GPP, you get LTE advanced information. Very great site for all that. And you get a lot of specifications. As well as CBRS, CBRS Alliance has a lot of great information. That's where our product is certified, authorized to be used. You can get that information there and see other authorized devices. Availability and more, so it's available on our website. You can go and look at the landing page as well as the individual product pages for the LTE 7461 and LTE 7480. You have the product descriptions, product images, you get the specs on the, on the product itself, as well as the data sheets and then the user's guide. So learn about more about fixed wireless access. We have our landing page for fixed wireless broadband. You can learn more about that. A lot of information talks about the solutions. You can sign up, you can see some of the webinars and get uh, a product evaluation set up for them. We have giving away two Amazon gift cards, $100 to two lucky winners today who are here on the webinar. So Wesley will be reaching out to you and we'll randomly draw a winner at the end of our webinar and you'll be contacted. Make sure to maybe check your spam emails or if anything, if I reach out to you, uh, just wanna make sure everyone has a fair chance and you check everything that's on there. Either that or we're gonna, me and Wesley are gonna go to lunch ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Feel free to reach out to us. As I said, if you have questions, reach out to us at this link here for our sales inquiries. And also look for us on these uh, social media outlets. You know, we would love to hear from you. If you haven't joined us already, please do so and stay connected, stay ahead. Another question? Another question? Another question. Another question. Whoa, okay. Okay, so let's see. So the question is, LTE range for five to six miles is line of sight or fading like reflection or refraction? Right, so that's a great question that can come up. We have the, that ability of that near line of sight. That way, in those instances where there's some fading of the signal or reflections or, you know, it'll help uh, enhance that and provide connection in those environments. So when we deploy these and these trials, we had uh, some partners that helped. They were specialized in fixed wires access installations and deployments. So there are some best practices that we've learned along the way to help you know, us in the deployment. So in your, in your environments too, if you're already deploying some sort of fixed wireless access or LTE. Uh, maybe you have that uh, also as another added support in your installations. Um, so that's a great question in, you know, it's something that we'll probably look at in uh, further FAQs that we'll provide for our customers. Excellent question. Thank you. All right, so Patrick and I would like to thank everyone for joining our webinar today. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to email us directly at webinar at uh, We hope to see you all here again at our next ISL webinar. Thank you so much.